But first, a primer on the County Office of Education. Like school districts, it has school campuses. They're for students who are homeless, in foster care, or have been involved in the criminal justice system. The office also provides budget oversight and services for the region's 42 school districts. Its board governs those operations, and it hears appeals when a school district blocks a charter school from opening. That's why charter school advocates and unions poured more than a million dollars into the board's 2016 races. It's unfortunate that in some cases there's this um, competition between local, uh, public school districts and charter schools. Alicia Munoz has represented the southeastern section of the county since 2014. Major cities in California. She's defending her seat from Eric Lund. He's one of two candidates who could tilt the board in favor of charters. Last year it denied six out of 11 charter appeals. I've tried to vote as ethically as I am able to, uh, based on the information I have. Munoz says decisions on charter appeals are actually more procedural than election politics would lead you to believe. Make your writing fun and interesting to read. State law spells out exactly what board members must consider when making their decisions. A former English language teacher and a dean at Cuyamaca College, Munoz is proud of a decision she says was more subjective. The hiring of Superintendent Paul Gothold. Safety takes many forms. You know, he truly values students. He values staff. He believes in equity. <laughs> and that's important, says Munoz, because of the vulnerable populations county schools serve. So can you guys go to Google Classroom? She says that's why she's on the board and why she has no plans to seek office elsewhere. So you guys ready to get going? Challenger Lund teaches business courses at Grossmont College and is CEO of the East County Chamber of Commerce. He says the board needs to be more open to charter schools. I really care about our kids and I really care about our young adults and their career pathways and ensuring that they can find great education alternatives, um, whether it's public charter or public schools. Lund says he would be a voice for charters, but not a rubber stamp. And that helps the whole community. He also hopes to leverage his business background to improve career technical education in the county. I sit on a collaborative of the two community colleges out here in East County and the high school district and that's exactly what they're trying to do is make sure they work together so that students can be prepared to enter the workplace and become a strong workforce. Innovation South, yeah. In the opposite corner of the county, Cheryl James Ward is squaring off with incumbent Rick Shea. James Ward is married to the county's former superintendent, Randy Ward, who resigned amid claims he misspent public funds. He hasn't settled with attorney Corey Briggs ahead of a jury trial later this year, and James Ward says that says something, and so does her experience. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. She's the chief of academic innovation at E3 Civic High, a charter school in the downtown central library. James Ward also teaches educational leadership at San Diego State, but she started her career yes. as a software yes. engineer at the NASA Jet Propulsion yes. Laboratory. I actually left JPL um, for another job that paid a lot more, thinking that that would kind of squelch my desire to teach. But it didn't, so I ended up taking a leave from there, and I became a math teacher in the Los Angeles Unified School District. Uh, and there I um, really got connected to kids and found that I, I wanted to do more for them. James Ward said she would be supportive of deserving charter schools if elected. The decision day is today. But she says she got involved at E3 Civic High because it's a place where she could incubate new ideas and share them with other administrators. It's really about how we prepare kids for the modern era of education. That's my research at San Diego State. That's what I live. That's what I breathe. Yep, we did. Incumbent Shea survived an expensive run against a charter-backed candidate in 2016. But this year, hardly any contributions have flowed into the campaigns. Maybe the, the objectivity prevailed rather than the special interest of wanting someone to rubber stamp things. Shea says he approves charters that are good for kids and denies those that aren't. Shea was an educator for more than 30 years, spending much of that time in the county's juvenile court schools. He says he's on the board to represent the community's most vulnerable children. By me being in the classroom with those students, knowing their needs more than a normal average person would do, I think that's a real asset to this board to understand the students that we're trying to help. Shea says he wants to continue to be an advocate for students and to nurture a recent partnership with the district attorney's office to prevent school violence. The candidates will learn their fates and that of the board majority in the primary. Megan Burks, KPBS News.